Hello. In this clip, I'm going to explain why the Bible doesn't matter and why it does. Let's begin with the Bible. It is claimed to be the inspired Word of God, and some people believe each and every word of the Bible is inspired by God. So as an example, we have St. Paul, who is writing here, and he's saying he gives this command, but he says it's from God. So with these words, this verse, allegedly inspired by God, but written by St. Paul. Now we'll call these level two type verses because there is a higher kind of verse, and that is a verse spoken, allegedly, by God himself. In other words, the very words of God as recorded in God's own book, God quoting himself. Now as an example of level one, we can see this. This is Jesus himself speaking. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father and he is in heaven. So these are what we'll call level one verses. These are supposedly God speaking, God quoting himself in his very own book. But we see a problem here. In Catholic school, I was taught to call each and every priest I ever met father. And as it turns out, there's over 400,000 of them in the world. But it's not only the Catholics who have the problem of not following the uh, simple words of Jesus. Here's a rather longer quote. These are all the words of Jesus, and he is saying, do not swear. You can read it at your leisure. But he says, let your words be yea and nay. Anything more than that cometh of evil. These verses are almost universally ignored by Christians. Many times I've seen in movies, people are asked to place their hand on the Bible, and they ask, do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? When the President of the United States is sworn in, he takes an oath. When people join the United States Armed Forces, they do solemnly swear. Not only the President, but Senators solemnly swear. And in the United States, school children routinely recite the Pledge of Allegiance every day in school, which could be considered an oath. Now, how can it be that Christians ignore the very words of Jesus? Well, there are lots of people who will explain why this is right. There's the Pope who will explain why it's okay to call a priest father. And there are other preachers who will explain various other things, like why it's okay to take an oath. They might say that you're taking the Bible too literally, or you're ignoring the context, or you have to read it in the original ancient Hebrew, Aramaic, or Greek. And there are academic disciplines of exegesis and hermeneutics. And there are other reasons. The bottom line sometimes is they'll basically disown the Bible by saying, well, the letter killeth, but the Spirit gives life. In other words, don't believe what you read. Believe what pops into your head. Well, whether they're right or wrong in what they say, nonetheless, a person has to make a choice. Do they follow what their eyes tell them? Or do they follow what these people say? Very basic choice. Now, you might think I'm arguing, well, let's follow the Bible. No, I'm not. Because the Bible has some good things, but it has some horrible things. For instance, in the Old Testament, anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. Now, anyone who's raised a child knows that sometimes children go through tough times, especially in the teenage years, and perhaps a child curses a parent. Should they be put to death? Now, a Christian might say, well, wait a minute, this is the Old Testament. It doesn't count. Well, there's Jesus in the New Testament specifically citing those verses with approval. Jesus, for God said, honor your father and your mother, and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. That's a problem. So we get down to the fact that some of the things that Jesus says are ignored, and taking oaths or not to me isn't a big deal. If this were followed, I don't think it would matter a whole lot. But then we have Jesus specifically citing, citing with approval an Old Testament command that's barbaric. So we have to decide whether to follow the Bible or these people or maybe our own conscience. Maybe God didn't make it so easy where we could just follow a book or follow a preacher. But if we have to choose, I would say following a preacher is definitely preferable to following the literal words of the Bible. So this, in a nutshell, is why the Bible doesn't matter. Because no one follows what it says anyway. They follow what someone, some preacher, some priest, some pope, tells them it says. 
And this, in a sense, makes the Bible like the, like a golden calf. Now, what I mean by that is there's a incident in the Old Testament that Moses goes up on the mountain and the Hebrews decide to create a golden calf and worship it. Now, if that situation continued to this day and we still worship the golden calf, obviously there'd be people telling us what the golden calf is saying. And what I'm saying is that the situation today is really not much different. We have the golden calf in the form of the Bible, and we have people telling us what the Bible says. In Europe, a few centuries ago, they were telling us that it was very important to kill women who were witches. And this went on in Europe for a few centuries. Witches were burnt and hung, often they were tortured beforehand, because the Bible says, do not allow a witch to live. Then they decided that we could ignore these commands. So in other words, the golden calf that is the Bible at one point was saying, kill witches, and now it says, no, nah, don't bother. For many centuries, especially in the south of the United States, the golden calf in the form of the Bible said that slavery was fine, no problem. But now the golden calf says that slavery is not fine. Don't do it. It works the other way, too. A lot of people today sincerely believe that the Bible condemns abortion. Well, here's what the Pope has to say about it. But people are told that this verse condemns abortion. I've seen billboards with this verse. Well, actually part of this verse. Often these last, that this last phrase is dropped. And they've been told that this verse condemns abortion. What it actually does is it just talks about God's foreknowledge. Before he formed someone in the womb, he knew that that person would exist, and that person was appointed as a prophet. This verse does not refer to abortion, but people are told it does, and they believe it. So the idea of calling the Bible a golden calf is basically just as if there were a golden calf that was worshipped, we would have to follow what preachers say the golden calf is saying. And the situation isn't much different. We are told to follow what the preacher says the Bible is saying, not what our own eyes tell us. And we're trained to do this from childhood. I remember in second or third grade, I was being taught about the Garden of Eden, and I was taught that the word serpent really meant the devil. Well, the word serpent might mean the devil, or it might mean Darth Vader, or it might mean the ghost of Christmas past. But the word that supposedly God chose to use in his very own super duper book was serpent. It's disturbing that people accept what they're told rather than the evidence of their own eyes. And there's a disturbing parallel in the book 1984 by George Orwell. It's a dystopian novel and he says the party told you to reject the evidence of your eyes and ears. It was their most essential command and that's really the most essential command of Christianity. Basically don't believe what your eyes tell you. Believe these people. Well, that's why the, Bi- why the Bible doesn't matter. Why does it matter? Well, it matters because once, once the switch is done and you are accepting these people as telling you the word of God, that puts enormous power into their hands. For instance, in medieval Europe, one man said that God willed that a crusade be conducted, that war be conducted, and all Europe rose up. Now, that man who said this was a pope. And all of Europe rose up to wage war. Now, this is a topic I want to return to. There's much more that can be said about why the Bible matters, but I don't don't want to make this clip too long. But I'll end up by mentioning that in this natural theology that we're developing, no writing is accepted as authoritative as Scripture. We can find good things in the Bible, in the Quran, in the Book of Mormon. We can find bad things in those books. Preachers claim that their particular scripture is the very word of God, but they do not act as if it's the very word of God. They take the freedom to make those words mean whatever they want them to mean. In effect, preachers say scripture means what they say it means, not what our own eyes tell us. Again, this is not necessarily a bad thing. I would not want parents killing their children if their children cursed them. But it does put tremendous power in the hands of the preacher. And it does show that the preacher doesn't really believe that their scripture is the word of God. Because they so freely make it mean whatever they want. 
I have more to say about why the Bible matters, but this is a long clip, and I'll do that in the next clip. Thanks for listening.